Taking the amateur observing scene by storm this week has been Astronomy Now contributor and reviews consultant Nick Howes, who captured a stunning image of comet siding spring fragmenting into two pieces. He now joins us from his home in Wiltshire, having just spent time on the Fox telescope doing follow-up observations. Nick, hi, thanks for joining us. Hello, Emily. Now, your story begins in your back garden where you were first observing the comet just over a week ago. What actually prompted you to take a look at it in the first place and what equipment were you using there? The thing that prompted me to observe the comet in the first place was there's a, a web forum called Stargazers Lounge and there'd been a heads up call on there saying that the comet C2007Q3 was in Draco quite near to a really nice edge on galaxy called NGC 5907. Um, and I thought, great, fantastic photo opportunity, go for that. Um, so I set up the telescope. So the observatory itself is in my garden. It's an eight by six kind of uh, roll off roof shed. Um, there's a TMB refractor in there, um, another refractor side by side parallel um, for auto guiding. Um, and a range of different cameras. I'm using an Attic um, 314L camera. Um, quickly worked out that I didn't really have the field of view to get both the galaxy and the comet in. And because I'd imaged the comet for the Royal um, Observatory Photography of the Year competition last year, I thought I'll try another comet, it'd be quite nice. So basically, just started imaging the comet that night. And it's all nice because I can remotely control it from the house. Um, so I just sat in the front room watching the subframes coming in and then basically packed up, went to bed. Next day, did the same thing, um, and then I kind of noticed that something had changed in the comet. So. Did you then make more observations with your own equipment, or was that the point you decided to call upon the capabilities of the Fox telescope? Well, after the second, after the second night, um, I basically uh, kind of worked out that there's something had changed in the tail. Um, I had some time booked on Fox anyway, and previously I'd been imaging another comet, uh, 29P Schwassmann Watchman. Um, for Richard Miles at the BAA and just helping out a little project there. So I thought it might be an interesting thing to have a look at and see if there's anything interesting happening in the comet, especially, you know, two metre telescope. It's uh, hopefully going to be quite good at getting to the, to the nucleus and the, co well, the, the coma uh, in quite a lot of detail. So that's kind of what prompted me. And what did you get out of those first sessions with the Fox telescope? Well, the first session with Fox, I mean, it was it was clear. I had to work out the coordinates because they've got a sexadecimal. Um, they work in sexadecimal hours, minutes, seconds, and most of the coordinates that you see online from the BAA and the IAU, etc., are all in just pure decimal. So converting those over, um, punched in the coordinates into Fox, and immediately it was there, which was quite nice. Um, downloaded the first couple of subframes, uh, didn't really think much of it, um, but then as the comet was moving, I was dropping those subframes into a program called Maxim DL, which is an image processing application. And I kind of have a, a few little routines that I run through on that most times. And it was, it was obvious it was something there. And initially I thought, oh, it may be a defect in the camera. It could be just, you know, a blob. It could have been a background star, it could have been anything. But gradually, as the frames are coming in and the comet was moving, this little blob was moving with it. And it was then pretty clear within about 10 minutes that there was something tailing the comet. Um, I then went on to Google and various other kind of search engines and had a look if anyone else had noticed anything. And people had said that they'd noticed a brightening in the comet at the previous weekend, but there didn't seem to be anything online. And I searched, you know, extensively um, saying that the comet had split. Um, so I telephoned Fox Telescope Control then and said, I think I've got something. And they said, oh, OK, um, we'll see what we can do. Um, then I was in contact with a few other people and they put me in touch with the IAU's um, MPC um, minor, Planet, minor Planet and Cometry Group and the BAA um, as well. And they were amazing. The BAA literally instantly put the announcement up on their website, which was great. And I sent then the kind of alert emails off to the IAU um, straight away. How many sessions have you had on the Fox telescope to observe the comet now? Um, to, observe, to observe this comet, I've had about five sessions. Just came off one now. Um, sadly, didn't really see much because the coordinates, um, I don't know if the orbits may be changing a little bit, but the Fox, I don't know if you, uh, people know, but the Fox has got quite a small field of view. It's only got a five arc minute field of view. Uh, very high resolution, so it's fantastic for imaging, um, you know, tight globular clusters, small galaxies, that type of thing. But extended objects, it's not so good for. Um, so you've basically got to hone in directly on the nucleus to get this. And if the coordinates aren't exactly right, um, you won't get it. So the last 30 minute session, which is typically how long I get on folks, is about 30 minutes. And by the time you've slewed the telescope to its new target, 
we set up all the imaging parameters, we set up the filters, etc. It's down to about 22, 23 minutes you get left. Um, this time I didn't see it in a school that were also doing observations. They couldn't find it as well. We think we've got the correct coordinates for tomorrow. So I've got another session tomorrow, and thankfully that's about an hour. So hopefully um, I'll be able to do further follow-on observations because I've got a hunch that other things might be happening as well. Yes, you said you suspected there might be a third fragment as well. Is that something you're going to try and follow up on in later sessions? I, I am. Um, it's, it's interesting. The image processing routines that I'm using in Photoshop and Maxim, um, I'm using things called a thing called deconvolution, which basically allows me to kind of really tighten up the, the star field and the, and the comet itself. And some of the images now are showing an extended kind of lump coming off the secondary fragment. Um, it's very, very small, very faint. I'm estimating around about magnitude 20 to 21 even, which is just really, really faint. Um, ideally, if Falk's telescope had adaptive optics, which they don't have at the moment, um, you may be able to pick that up. Obviously, we're limited by the seeing and, and various other factors. It'd be great if Hubble or Keck or one of the big observatories could do a follow-on because they could obviously, the you know huge resolution they've got, probably definitely confirm that it's a third fragment. Um, there was a professor at Michigan State University who effectively said that the comet should start to fragment and split up like this. So I do think there's a third fragment, but hopefully I'll confirm it soon if it, if it starts moving away from the main comet. As well as support from other amateurs, your story has grabbed a lot of media attention from all around the world. I think even as far as Russia, Canada, Poland and Ethiopia. How have you found all of this media attention? It's, it's gone a bit mental. Um, I've had the Times, um, Discovery Channel in Canada, um, gosh, all sorts of newspapers all around the world, El Mundo in Spain, um, the Paris Herald, um, Wired, all sorts of different websites have been, and newspapers have been covering it. Um, it's been nice. I mean, I haven't had this kind of attention since I was in a pop group in the, in the early 90s where we kind of had similar kind of uh, media attention with pop groups I was working with. So. It, it's different, but it's not the point of, of what we're trying to do. Obviously, what I'm trying to hopefully show is that amateurs can still do um, valid scientific research. Um, if you look at people like Hanny Van Arkel, for example, with the Galaxy Z project, um, she obviously noticed something that had been in the original Palomar plate since, since the 60s. Um, but she spotted it. She said, what is this? And then, um, you know, she's got all that fantastic follow-on and media attention, and, and she's got the Hubble looking at it um, in the next few days, as far as more, so. Citizen science, yay. Do you think your discovery is going to change the direction in which your own observations go in the future? Um, I hope so. I mean, comet, comets have been quite good for me. As I said, the Royal Observatory competition last year, that was quite nice because I got into the kind of top three or four in the um, uh, solar system section uh, with an image of Comet Holmes. Um, they're fun. They're, you know, they're transitory objects. They only come through, some of them only come through once in a lifetime. This one, I think, has got an 11,000 year um, orbital period, so we're never going to see it again. Um, and it's interesting, these kind of comets that come in from the Oort cloud and they swing by the sun, they, they're under enormous amounts of thermal stress. So you hope something is going to happen. And I think it'd be good for amateurs um, and the people who've got access to folks, the astronomical societies, school children at, at various schools and colleges around the world, if they can maybe focus on comets, they might find something um, pretty quickly. Well, good luck with the rest of your sessions on the Fox Telescope, and we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay tuned to www.astronomynow.com for more updates. And of course, you can follow Nick Howes on Twitter at Nick Astronomer. Thanks. <laughs>